Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Niana Brinda, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now in London is Serbia's Finance Minister, Lazar Kristic. So hi, thanks for joining us today. Hello, how are you? I'm great. Well, um, it would be great to start off with um, the major reforms that have actually been implemented recently. Can you just give us some detail um, about how those uh, came about? Yeah, I, I think um, three or four weeks ago we announced as a government, uh, in what was a bit of a precedent, a uh, televised live uh, government meeting, uh, and essentially a new economic policy. And the, um, uh, the economic policy comprises of two main directions. One is uh, the fiscal stabilization. So what that means is um, aspiring to change the debt growth path, uh, debt to GDP um, uh, ratio growth path um, and stabilize it by um, 2016. Um, hopefully uh, uh, then put it on a downward path in 2017. The, um, that's one direction. There is a set of measures uh, detailed behind that. And then um, uh, the other one is uh, essentially promoting its pro-growth measures, which are mainly structural, so changing the legislation in a way which is going to allow for a more flexible labor market, for instance, for uh, easier issuance of the construction permits, uh, the cutting of the red tape, etc. Okay, when it comes to um, some of the critics, I suppose, in terms of long-term growth, some of that's actually on Serbia's debt and the refinancing of it coming up. I know that uh, Serbia's not keen on really getting a mass bailout. How do you um, propose in terms of tackling that refinancing of debt? Yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, Serbia needs uh, any bailout whatsoever. Um, uh, the refinancing uh, is part of the regular uh, debt management. Uh, essentially what uh, we have uh, quite a bit coming up over the next, um, uh, in, in the short term as well, but uh, we have um, a significant demand for, uh, on our domestic market that has actually turned quite a bit around uh, since, um, uh, since the announcement of the measures. Uh, the uh, price of the bonds has gone up. Um, I think the macroeconomic conditions uh, globally are still favorable um, and we are also in conversations with uh, several, in several bilateral conversations for, um, uh, for access to uh, 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 actually favorable financing as well. Okay, well when it comes to um, the unemployment rate in Serbia, it's around 25% which is quite high and with the new um, economic policy this is obviously meant to try and help um, get more people into work, but how dependent is Serbia on foreign direct investment to promote more, jo um, more job growth in the country? Well, look, I think we're, what we're doing with this is we're shifting um, away from what was our, um, our economic growth model, which was essentially state propelled. Um, it was the state that was essentially um, doing through, uh, um, first getting the loans, then uh, investing massively in infrastructure. Um, we're doing away from that, so we're shifting the center more to concessions, more to PPPs. So essentially what we're looking for is growth uh, of employment in the private sector. Um, and uh, clearly uh, FDI is always welcome, that's why we're here in London as well, uh, to promote the new, uh, the new economic policy and invite, uh, invite investors. At the same time, I, I uh, firmly believe that for long-term sustainability, and possibly around FDIs, we have several examples like that. Uh, already in Serbia, we can build a uh, domestic export-oriented SME sector, which is uh, going to integrate into the, into the bigger supply chain. I think we have a lot, of, a lot to offer in that domain. I think we have qualified labor force, um, uh, uh, and then we also have uh, uh, our, I think we're well set up for R&D in particular in the uh, engineering IT, um, IT sectors. Well, I suppose one of the um, key parts and the most interesting from the Western point of view is the shift from state-owned companies to more privatization. And I know there's um, a number, um, over 100, 100, around 150, 160 state-owned companies that are being, in a way, forced to privatize by June next year. Can you tell me about how those talks or strategic partnerships are shaping up for many of these companies? Yeah, so it's actually much more than that. So there are 179 companies that are that have been in the privatization process for uh, over 10 years now, and that's, what, uh, that's something we need to finally um, uh, get, uh, uh, get over with and find uh, solutions for, uh, for each and every one of these companies. I think there is probably a dozen of them that are more important than the others in terms of the number of employees, in terms of them being the pillars of um, uh, essentially stability and uh, uh, well, also used to be uh, economic growth in, uh, uh, in particular regions of Serbia. So as such, they are very strategic. 
um, for those who are looking for um, uh, for strategic partnership partnerships to try to find uh, uh, restructuring uh, to create restructuring plans that essentially allow uh, for these companies to continue on um, uh, or find their you know maybe new future um, uh, on the basis of uh, of the glory of of, of bef maybe 20 years ago or so. Um, uh, there is a large number of other uh, state-owned companies which is not necessarily in, in that particular um, stage of the privatization process that are also uh, 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 on the list of, of companies that we, uh, we want to deal with. Among those are also um, uh, some of the very healthy enterprises that are essentially uh, 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 the pride of Serbia. But I think the, 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 um, the idea here is a shift away from, um, from state involvement to um, to more private involvement. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. That was the Finance Minister from Serbia.